Thank you. I'm going to now uh, turn it over to uh, uh, Tim Osborne. He is uh, <clears throat> NOAA's man here in Louisiana. He's with the Office of Coast Survey, and he's going to tell you about some of the, uh, you know, why this, all of this stuff fits together in a big way here in Louisiana, where heights, storms, navigation, all of these things come together. Tim. Thanks. Good morning. I'd like to, uh, uh, all right, I'd like to go ahead and uh, also uh, mention that Dave Zokowski, um, uh, back in the early 80s, was proclaimed the father of subsidence uh, in terms of his uh, height adjustments that he made back then when a uh, colonel, New Orleans district, actually came up to him and said, so you're the reason for subsidence in Louisiana. So anyone sitting next to Dave will probably notice a shift of a centimeter or two during the meetings. Don't be alarmed, that's just Dave. Um, I'd like to also uh, talk to you about, a, uh, uh, as Dave led into, is the fact that there's some real advantage and some pitfalls, but also there's the reality. The reality is very important because we live on a landscape that today is actually forcing us to really move to these new technologies, these new techniques, and importantly, these new partnerships. Uh, some of the issues I want to point out before here is the fact that the landscape just uh, not is the uh, land that you're measuring, but it's interaction with the uh, landscape around it, and that's water. Uh, how many people in South Louisiana? How many people in South Louisiana? Bulk of the population of Louisiana lives at, near, or below sea level today. I mean, how many people from Terrebonne Parish? Terrebonne Parish, about 80% of the land area of Terrebonne Parish, it's two feet of elevation or less on average, and it's continued to move as well. Uh, a couple of things here is the fact that this is not a Louisiana issue. With Jerry Mader and the other folks that are in this audience, one of the big issues here is the fact that land elevations and water and their interactions can occur across an entire state, an entire region, an entire uh, coast of the United States. This is actually Hurricane Ivan. This is Pensacola Beach, Florida. This is actually a uh, uh, sign in uh, Destin where looters will be shooted and eaten, meaning that uh, Louisiana is not the only place that has a mastery of the English language. Uh, but there is no one that's jumping over the fence to try. Uh, this is actually Hurricane Katrina, the day before landfall. You're not looking at the clouds. This is a radar image, and this is actually the elevation of the water. You're actually seeing the water being lifted up as it's actually moving to the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi. So this is, shows you that our landscape and the influence and interactions between the land elevations here and the water uh, is something that uh, this is why best practices is so important. This is Hurricane Ivan. This is what I want to keep stressing. Every time I show you some of these things, a lot of these things not necessarily local because local sometimes becomes a focus of that we have the only problems. We don't. This is a Scambia Bay. This is the first bridge that actually <clears throat> came apart during a hurricane that we then saw subsequent years occurring in Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. This is actually a Scambia Bay Bridge, 30 miles inland, Hurricane Ike, storm surge transited through Pensacola Pass all the way through Pensacola Bay and then came up into Escambia well north and then actually took out this bridge and actually uh, sadly enough killed the truck driver that was trapped out here. This is a four, <clears throat> is a four pile uh, U.S. Corps of Engineers water level station in Galveston Bay. It is gone. We don't know where it is. This is from Hurricane Ike. So it's showing you the impact of water levels interacting with land elevations is very important. This is Pensacola Naval Air Station. This is Hurricane Ivan. Again, the water and the storm surge came here. This is a three-story building. The storm waves took out the top of that building. So that when you talk about measuring and needing with this best practices to look at uh, obtaining and working within a landscape that can see these kind of uh, uh, pressures and events happening almost on a yearly basis. This is why it's so important that you're going to this new technology. Uh, this is Cameron Parish on the south edge of Calcasieu Parish. This is Hurricane Rita. Uh, essentially, uh, every, almost every residence in Cameron Parish was affected by the storm. Most of them were obliterated and brought up, showing the uh, elevations of Cameron Parish, Calcasieu Parish being so vulnerable. Day before Hurricane Ike, this is Bolivar Peninsula on the way, this is Rollover Pass, 
the bridge and this is the road over to Galveston. This is the day after. Day before, I'm sorry, day before, nice streets, nice subdivisions, beautiful uh, dune protected uh, area. This is what's left. It's gone. So imagine in your surveying and engineering effort of looking at a landscape like this and what do you do to obtain uh, some kind of control, some kind of reference points to do work in terms of recovery, rebuilding, reconstruction, restoration, or removal of debris. And this is the kind of thing that I think is very important. Here's Gilchrist, Texas on the left before the storm. Here's Gilchrist, Texas on the right. Uh, Ivan, Dolphin Island, Alabama. This is a LIDAR image of pre-Ivan. Here's post-Ivan, Dolphin Island, Alabama. That storm, a Cat 3, went right past Dolphin Island, Alabama to hit Pensacola. You can see most of the camps, the streets are still there, not a problem. This is Katrina, after Katrina, Dolphin Island, Alabama. A Cat 3 hitting the Louisiana-Mississippi border. And this is what it looked like after Katrina in Alabama. Imagine, again, your efforts coming in as, in terms of a survey engineering recovery effort and trying to establish some kind of control or reference points out here and you're not using GPS. Where we are today, you can see geographically as the coastline is right here, we're on a landscape that basically has been built. We're on a, we are on a naturally occurring, deteriorating, degrading, deltaic base uh, formed by the Mississippi River. We have a landscape here that when Hurricane Ike made landfall as a Category 2 in Galveston, Texas, everything that was blue the day after Hurricane Ike made landfall, every coastal parish in Louisiana, including the North Shore of St. Tammany, was flooded for a Category 2. So this shows you that as elevations, and the point I'd like to try to make and why best practices I think is so important here, is the elevations continue to move down closer and closer to that of the water elevations themselves. It's very important that the work that you do uses the best practices of this GPS, real-time network resources, to essentially establish an ability to work within an area that may look like this. This is Hurricane Ike, this is Port Fouchon, uh, actually this is Rita. This is Hurricane Rita, this is the old Leeville Bridge, this is the road going down to Port Fouchon and Grand Isle. And this is Rita making landfall over in the Texas-Louisiana border area. Again, the work you're trying to do as you go down there is I need you to set up some reference points. I need you to do a recovery effort. I need you to go ahead and reestablish some surveys of some critical project areas. What do you do when the landscape looks like this? Category 2, Hurricane Ike. This is Port Fouchon. Gustav had just made landfall. I was down there briefly. Actually, I think uh, we won't talk about what we did in Port Fouchon, except we worked very, very, very hard, and we slept on hard terrazzo floors. And, uh, but we uh, did an emergency hydro survey, reopened the port. Enter 100 energy trucks came into the area, started reestablishing power to the area, and guess what? Ike comes in, makes landfall in Texas. This is the day before Ike made landfall, where you have 100 energy trucks trying to get up LA-1 before they flooded. They lost two trucks. They lost two trucks. They got drowned and swept out. The harbor police were trapped getting the trucks out. They couldn't get out themselves, so they had to actually go back in and stay at the operations center where water got six and seven feet around them throughout the entire storm event. This is Hurricane Ike uh, landfalling in Texas. This is Golden Meadow. This is the southern edge of the South Lafourche Levee District. And this is the Golden Meadow uh, floodgate right here. And everything south is underwater for a Category 2 making landfall in Texas. Again, what are your efforts and how are your efforts uh, going to be employed or based off of with this kind of landscape that's uh, further and further to and below that of sea level? Uh, this is, uh, and Rick Johnson did not set this benchmark, so don't blame John Chance. This is a benchmark in Fifi Island, just uh, by uh, Grand Isle. This is a benchmark in Bay Gardeen in Plaquemines Parish. Four feet of water, it's well maintained. Uh, the outboard motor almost hit the thing before they actually were able to locate it, but it's still there. 
This is actually something I'd like to credit to John Chance, and I'd like to also credit to many of you people of actually sharing their experiences of trying to maintain controls in a coastal landscape that's actually moving. Rick actually gave me these, uh, Ricardo Johnson, John Chance Land Surveys. Set a nice mark right here, Plaquemines, Plaquemines right, Rick? Yeah. Yep. Barrette, okay. Uh, set a nice mark, did a great job, good environment, had it well flagged, easy to find. 2002, eight years later, you can see what it looks like now, and even worse than today, where the mark is essentially out, now out in open water, it's been eroded around the base, and it makes it a very difficult time to really trust it unless you constantly keep out and keep reobserving. This is an example that we live with every day. This is uh, South Lafouche Parish near Hackberry Bay. Same thing. The PVC pipe actually is still well intact, and the mark itself, except that you have to go out in, in a boat in about four feet of water to actually get to it. Here's another one under the graceful uh, natural shade of an old dead oak over here in Plaquemines Parish as well. So what's the challenge? The challenge is the fact that static marks today are making it, and a landscape that's moving down to and below that of sea level, are making your referencing in that area to do your work in coastal protection, coastal restoration, hurricane flood levees, uh, road construction. And it's not just South Louisiana. It's also all of Louisiana. It's also many parts of the northern Gulf Coast forcing you to essentially go to the new type of resources that you're here to learn about today. The reason why this is so important is the fact that the landscape changes. You know, it's one thing to be sitting in the middle of the country, uh, you know, at 100 feet of elevation and essentially worrying about a mark and how its integrity is going to be degrading over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. We don't have that luxury. We don't have that timeline. We could see an entire landscape change in a 24-hour hurricane event. We could see, while we didn't get hurricanes last year, many of the people you're sitting with today here saw the winter storm season last year being a very severe set of several months where we have two, three, four winter cold fronts every week. And it changed the landscape. It changed the landscape. Now you multiply that by 20 years, you put in every 36 months on average the fact that we get hit by, hit by a hurricane, and you can see the landscape then being changed dramatically. I w wanted to really commend all of you for being a partners that you are for NOAA. And every one of you in any way, in some way or fashion, sometime in the recent past has interacted with us. This is a very important set of uh, sessions and meetings, and everyone that is here today from NOAA is a, is a opportunity for you to learn more about how best to use this type of new technology and resource to help serve the state and help serve your purposes in your work that you're doing every day. Thank you.